Hi everybody, this video is looking at the structure of nucleic acids, so the structure of DNA and RNA. So nucleic acids are polymers made up of nucleotides, so the nucleotide is the monomer. So in a nucleotide we've got three different parts. We have five carbon sugar, and we call this a pentose sugar, because pent meaning five. The five carbon sugar is then attached to a phosphate group, and it's also attached to a nitrogenous base. So the nitrogenous bases, uh, we've got uh, cytosine, thymine, uracil, adenine, and guanine, C, G, A, T, and U. So this is our nucleotide. So this is our monomer for our nucleic acids. So nucleic acid, so DNA or RNA, will be made up of thousands of these nucleotides um, all bonded together covalently. So here we have one uh, nucleotide, and then you have another nucleotide, and a bond is formed through a condensation reaction, and this bond joins the pentose sugar and the phosphate group, and it's called a phosphodiester bond. So it's a very strong bond, it's a covalent bond. So if we... Um, join lots of them together, then we get a structure like this. Uh, obviously, there's only four nu uh, nucleotides here. In an RNA or DNA molecule, there'd be many thousands of them. And what we end up with is this, um, what we call a sugar phosphate backbone of the nucleic acid. So it's a very strong sugar phosphate backbone. In RNA, the pentose sugar is ribose. And in DNA, the pentose sugar is deoxyribose. There is another difference in terms of the bases, but for now that's all we'll look at. So the nucleotides are essentially the same, which is ribose or deoxyribose, depending if it's RNA or DNA. Okay, so we're going to just look at ATP um, as um, another example of a nucleotide. And it's something that people don't realise often is a nucleotide. ATP is a phosphorylated nucleotide. So it's made up of ribose, adenine is the base, and we have three phosphate groups. But even though, so that's why it's phosphorylated, because we've got an extra two phosphate groups. But it's still a nucleotide, but it still has this same basic structure of pentose sugar, nitrogenous base, and phosphate group. When ATP is converted into ADP, then a phosphate group is removed. So that's what ADP would look like, still uh, a nucleotide. OK, let's think about base pairing now. So the nitrogenous bases are able to pair up with one another, and we have what we call complementary base pairing. There are two groups. We have the purines. Guanine and adenine are two bases which are in the purines group. The other group are the pyrimidines. Cytosine, thymine, and uracil are the pyrimidines. So these four are found in DNA. RNA is the same, but RNA does not have thymine. RNA has uracil instead. So RNA would have guanine, cytosine, adenine, and uracil. DNA would have guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. So in base pairing, a purine will always pair with a pyrimidine because of the structure of the molecule. So guanine and cytosine always pair up. We say they are complementary to one another. Adenine and thymine will always pair up. They are complementary to one another. In RNA, instead of adenine and thymine, you would have adenine and uracil pairing up because they are complementary to one another. And in terms of the way they pair up, guanine and cytosine pair up by the bonds that they make. They're all hydrogen bonds, and guanine and cytosine have three hydrogen bonds between their, uh, their molecules. Adenine and thymine, or adenine and uracil, will only make two hydrogen bonds 
between them. So you need to remember that. Um, you need to remember which are purines, which pyrimidines. And you need to remember that C and G have three hydrogen bonds. A and T or A and U only have two hydrogen bonds. Now, one way that you can remember that is by drawing it out like this. So if we draw cytosine, uracil, and thymine, then we have a word. The word is cut. And just the way that I remember it, so cut is a longer word, and pyrimidine is a longer word than purine. Gar, sort of a word, and it's a short word. Purine is a short word. That's one way that you might be able to remember which are purines and which are pyrimidines. Okay, so let's look at the structure of DNA. So as we know, DNA is a polymer of nucleotides which are joined together by our phosphodiester bonds. So here we have just four of them. And DNA is a double-stranded molecule. So we have two molecules of DNA. There's one. And then here's the other. And th it forms, as we know, a double helix structure. These two molecules um, are bonded together with hydrogen bonds between our bases. So if we have C here, then we have to have G because they are complementary to one another. A and T, T and A, C, uh, G and C. So each of these is uh, complementary uh, base pairs. And based on the base pairing rules that we've just looked at, we can see how many hydrogen bonds there would be between each of them. Now, the other important thing about DNA is that it has a direction to it. One end is known as 5 prime, and the other end is known as 3 prime. And when the two DNA molecules come together, if you have a look at them, you can see that this DNA molecule here is running in a different direction to this one. So this second molecule here, our five prime end is down here. It's the opposite end. And the three prime end would be up here. So they're running in opposite directions. We say that these two strands are anti-parallel to one another. And then when our DNA forms its double helix, there will be precisely 10 base pairs in a single rotation. So from this point here, so as it goes round, then that's one full rotation, and there will be 10 base pairs in that distance there. So this is our double helix structure. Messenger RNA is an example of an RNA molecule. There are actually three different kinds of RNA molecule, messenger RNA, transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA. They're all made up of RNA nucleotides. We're just going to look at the structure of messenger RNA here. And first of all, just give you a brief outline of how messenger RNA is produced. So here we've got a section of DNA. A messenger RNA is made using a strand of DNA as a template. This is the process of transcription. So our DNA runs 5 prime to 3 prime. When the messenger RNA is made, nucleotides will be added, and it will start at the 5 prime end of the messenger RNA molecule. And here you can see complementary base pairing between the DNA base and the RNA base. Another nucleotide is added on, going from 5 prime to 3 prime, complementary base pairing, another nucleotide, and in this case, because the DNA base is adenine, that means that the messenger RNA, the RNA base, has to be uracil, because RNA has uracil instead of thymine. So every time a nucleotide is added to make our messenger RNA molecule, uh, we have a condensation reaction, and we're making our phosphodiester bonds between the nucleotides. So the messenger RNA also has a direction, 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Once it's been made, the hydrogen bonds between the template DNA and the messenger RNA are broken, and the messenger RNA is able to separate out. So this is now our messenger RNA molecule. It's made in the nucleus, and then it's able to leave the nucleus through the nuclear pore 
and go to the ribosome where it can be translated into a polypeptide. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you.